Hello, Tracy from Salem here. Um, thought I'd stop in to do um, an update on my April block for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, I say that so casually, stop in here, but I'm gonna tell you right now that this is the third time I am trying to make this video because of this, but I'll get to that. So um, yeah, so I decided to do a, um, uh, I didn't have any quilts that I would cut up for this uh, project, so I decided to do a, a crazy quilt. Um, and I watched a bunch of videos by Dances with Pitbulls. I think I mentioned that in my last video. She make tons of um, these kinds of quilts, uh, kind of a very traditionally Victorian kind of uh, quilt. Um, and so I just decided, you know, yeah, let me make that. And uh, I mean, a lot more went into it than that, but I'm not, but since this is the third time I'm doing this video, I'm not gonna say it all again. So, um, you know, it's absolutely a learning experience. So I definitely am gonna talk about my work dwells and do differently. Some people fear for me. They think I'm beating myself up when they hear me do this, but really this is the way I learn. So um, if it's too stressful to you, I invite you to come back another time. But this is the way that I learn, is work dwells and do differently. So I definitely have those. Um, I, so I just watched, as I said, Dance, Dances with Pitbulls, and she just makes her squares, and she makes tons and tons of squares, and then she does the stitching, which is kind of the, one of the big parts of crazy quilting is the stitching. So I just made the squares. Um, and I really didn't think ahead. <laughs> so lesson one, <laughs> uh, you know, so I cut out uh, um, nine pieces of muslin uh, to, to stitch on, um, nine squares of muslin. And um, I did the crazy quilting on each one. Um, but what I didn't do was to uh, give each one of them uh, a quarter inch hem or trim or whatever. I don't know why I didn't do that. I mean, she didn't do it. So that's why I didn't do it. But do it. Do it. <laughs> because then you can't stitch them together, right? So I put, so then I got some batting. I really wanted to have a quilt feel. And I put it on the batting. And of course, there's spaces between each one and they're not finished off. And they're, uh, leave a hem. Uh, so then, you know, I had these spaces, but you can see, I mean, so I still have, I have issues, right? But so then what I did to, to cover kind of the gaps was I used this ribbon. Um, and they do that on the, um, on crazy quilts, they do have, uh, what do you call these, like boundaries or borders or whatever between their squares, so that's fine. But you, as you can see, even still, I, I still have some issues. Um, something went crazy wonky down here. I don't know what, I don't know what happened there, but it's not, it's not fantastic. But here's what I will say, is that I was at least able to kind of keep telling myself, but the th you're gonna put tons and tons of stitches on here because that's the point of a crazy quilt. So you will just, you know, you will cover this stuff up somehow with stitching. It will happen. All will be well. As Julian of Norwich says, all will be well and all will be well and all manner of thing will be well. Of course, she's talking about kind of large philosophical and cosmological concepts and I'm just talking about a crazy quilt, but it still applies. So now, so I have my crazy quilt. I have, you know, this happening. And now I want to start stitching. So first I get out my stitch book. So I looked at a lot of crazy quilts. Um, and uh, I've got this great book by Sharon Boggan. She does the Pintangle site. If you have not been to the Pintangle site, please go there immediately, pintangle.com. It is like the largest uh, dictionary of stitches I've ever seen all in one place. And uh, you just, you can look by, I mean, the one problem is you, you have to know the stitch name, right? Because it's all listed alphabetically by stitch name and then you click the link for the stitch you want and it takes you to a page that shows you how to do that stitch. So if, if you're just, if you just discover your stitches by 
looking for something that looks like what you want to do, that's not the way, but she has this beautiful book, right? So I knew that I wanted to do this stitch because you see it on tons and tons of crazy quilts. It's like the quintessential crazy quilt stitch. So I knew that I wanted to do this. It's called the Cretan stitch. Cretan, Cretan. It's from the island of Crete, so I'm going to say Cretan. Um, and you see this all over the place on crazy quilts. So I knew I wanted to do that, and I want to begin with that stitch on my... I don't know if I'll do it on all four or if I'll do one stitch this way and a different stitch going this way. Not sure yet. Um, but I know that I want to start here with my Cretan stitch. So then I started to gather my threads. Um, I got some DMC floss. Uh, so I got these two. Um, let me get it on camera so that you can actually see it. Um, and I, and I love both of them, but what I decided essentially is that this one uh, is, isn't quite right. It's got a lot of green in it, and there is green, um, but I just, I didn't feel like it would pop, really. Um, and I felt like this one might pop a little more. So this has like the blues and the purples that you see in the quilt. Um, so I'm gonna put that one to the side. Um, I got out this Eleganza by Sue Spargo, um, variegated Eleganza, and it, I think just the purple is going to get lost. Um, and also this is a super thin, right? This is, this is a, uh, eight weight. Um, and so I think it's just too thin for this particular, uh, for the borders um, stitches. So it, it's probably gonna work in here and I might use it in these little places because every line in a, in a um, crazy quilt gets stitched. So I might use it later, but I don't think it's right for now. Um, I just got these two new threads from Steph Francis. Oh my God, don't go to that site because it's madness. It's impossible not to buy just a lot of thread and it I think it's you know reasonably priced but you also have to pay to get it from Italy so <laughs> um, this is linen and this is um, filament silk um, which is I, I like the sheen on this for a crazy quilt that seems but I think that this is too um, pastelli for the jewel tones of this also it's also very very thin right? So I think that that doesn't work. I love this so much. I love the colors of this. I think the peaches and the, um, I don't even know, what do you call that? The, the, the yellows, the plum. I just think this goes pretty well. Again, the, the, um, linen is so, uh, thin that I'm worried it's just going to disappear. So I will definitely keep it for these lines, but I don't think it's right for what I want to do first. So then I was looking at this. This is um, silk texture threads. And as you can see, it's, it's a couple of different kinds of threads. Um, so you have a kind of a nubbly silk. You have a pearl cotton. Um, I would quite like this one, and I think that this would work pretty, get it on the camera. I think that would work pretty well. Um, I think that that's kind of just, has just enough thickness and texture that it would show. But when I put it down on the quilt, I don't think these colors are right, you know? It's not that there's no pink, there is pink, um, but there's a lot of kind of plum and purple, and I just don't think that that goes with this kind of plummy thing. And since this is the line, um, I don't think that's... So then I, I got out finally this. This comes as a packet all wound together. Uh, this is a um, texture selection, again, from Steph Francis. And as you can see, you've got a bunch of different, so it's all one colorway, it's, it's dyed variegated, and all the threads are dyed in the same colorway. Um, you've got this lovely ribbon, which I've shown before, I love that, and this chenille, 
which is divine. Um, you've got this kind of metallic thing. You've got this kind of shiny pearl, and you've got the kind of more uh, matte pearl. Um, and I'd, I'm gonna guess that this is probably a, a five weight, that these are five weights. Um, yeah, so when I put this down, well, when it was all bundled up together, it was stunningly gorgeous, which I assume is why they bundle it up together, because it's just gorgeous, all bundled together. And I, th my th first thought was, yeah, I think this actually really works, because I've got, so I've got a lot of jewel-toned um, velvets and jewel-toned um, sari silks, um, and... I have, and then each one has this one piece somewhere in it of um, this, mm, mm, what do you call it, that you put on um, furniture upholstery. <clears throat> and what I like about this colorway is that it pulls out that one piece that is not jewel toned and kind of so then it feels like it's kind of maybe tying it together and getting a conversation going. Um, and when this was all wound together, it really, really spoke to this fabric. Um, so one of the reasons that this is the third time I'm trying to do this video is because of this thing. So it was all, as I said, it was all um, wound together in this kind of twist, you know? Uh, and every one of these was tied with like four knots and attempting to undo it made this massive crazy out of control you know mess it was it was quite infuriating and um I, it, it took a long time to make it make it so that I could actually access the fibers. So uh, so I love the chenille, um, and chenille is a very kind of Victorian, but the problem with chenille is that when you try to pull it through the fabric, it um, if the fabric is tight, all this kind of pulls down and pulls off. And the uh, velvets are very, very tightly woven. So you really can only use this on a loosely woven fabric. Um, I love the yarn, but I thought that a yarn can, uh, uh, you know, the, um, what do you call it? Yeah, ribbon is what I mean to say. That this ribbon competing with this ribbon was like a little too much ribbon. And also the, um, the Cretan stitch is, it's a very particular shape, right? And I want to make sure to crisply keep that shape so that it really looks like, has that crazy quilt look. And you can't do really crisp stuff, or I, I can't do really crisp stuff yet with a kind of a ribbon. So that, X made that. So what I chose the last time I recorded this video <laughs> was I chose this metallic. I felt like it would really pop and um, kind of speak to the other textiles on here. And so I started to stitch with this. And I'm just going to tell you that one of the reasons this looks as bad as it, this didn't used to look as bad as it does now, because this is where I started stitching. And this metallic turns out to be really, really hard to get through the fabric. Um, it it uh, bunches up and curls up a lot so that you keep getting knots. Um, it's kind of a rough texture, and so it doesn't pull through the fabric easily, and it was a hot mess. Yeah, so I'm not going to do this one. <laughs> um, and so then if it's between these two, I think the one with sheen is better for the style of quilt that I'm doing. So I'm just going to take a sip of my tea. Very yummy. Um chai tea uh, from Tea Source in Minnesota. They have a fantastic mix that you put into condensed milk and then scoop a little bit into your teacup and it is very authentic and very pleasing. Very pleasing. Uh, and
And after the debacle of working with this yarn, man, I deserve it. So I definitely have to get something to wind this thread on because it, it all it wants to do is just go into a knot, as you can see, is just begging to go into a knot. And there, and there it goes. So I definitely need to find something to wind that onto. Now, <clears throat> oh, that angle, that, look, this, this was just trying to get the knot out. Now, a cretin stitch, I keep wanting to say cretin. Maybe that's how you say it, I don't know. Mm. The eye of this needle might not be wide enough. See how it's, how it's won't really slide through very easily and it's, yeah. I need to just run and grab another needle. something that's pointy at the end. So I want, I don't want a tapestry needle, which is blunt because it's already pretty hard to get through this fabric. I want a tap, I want a chenille, which is pointy. All right. Now, the Cretan stitch. Oh. There we go. That's better. Uh, so this is gonna be pretty slippery. You wanna do a really good knot because you don't want it to come on unknotted. Although at this point I have my layer of linen which is what I usually use for my pages and I've got this batting. Um, so now first I, I have to go back in and attend to this. I can't, I don't want to try to stitch over that. So let me start on this side. Uh, Let's see, do I want them going up and down or do I want them going across? Actually think about that. I want them going, I want them going across. So I'm gonna start on this one. Now I'm a righty, so I'm gonna work from left to right. And <clears throat> the Cretan stitch is, uh, so, you so you imagine having two lines and you come up in the middle of the two lines then you go up and just take a little bite. You don't come all the way back down. And basically you're doing like a buttonhole stitch right here, right? You see the thread is underneath. So you come down, then you come below the middle line and take a little bite, not all the way up, a little bite. Again, doing a, a buttonhole stitch. So your thread is underneath. And then you go back up so that you're basically you're doing buttonholes, but you're going up and then down and then up and then down. And that creates this little pattern. Uh, now, what did I say I was doing? Did, did I say, I think this is my top and I'm going, I'm going along here and I wanna go from right to left, that's what I did. Okay, so I'm gonna come up, let's Zoom in a little and I will do my best. So I'm gonna come, my middle line is going to be the pink ribbon. All right, that's much better than this was. I couldn't even get it through before. I was gonna need pliers on every stitch. So now I'm gonna go above the line. I'm still probably gonna have to go in and out. Uh-huh. So why is this so hard to go through? This is 
Is this pointy enough? This is sari silk. It's proving to be a bit challenging to go through. I wonder why. I may need an even sharper needle. Hmm. Hmm. Curious. I don't know why. Oh, that's wicked sharp. Let's see if the eye is big enough. Now, see, I really don't want to be taking this on and off too much because I'm really over... Yeah, look what I'm doing to it. I really don't want to take it off this needle because it's just going to kind of, this is very, very fragile thread and I don't want to keep um, I'm just going to have to persevere. Persevere. Right? Nevertheless, she persisted. Okay. And this also, I can see, is gonna bunch up at the hole a lot. So it's gonna be very challenging thread to work with. Uh, but I, I wanna come up a little bit below that hole, but not all the way back down to my starting stitch. Whew, this is gonna to be tough. So I'm not going to film the whole thing, obviously, because this is going to take me quite a while. And I'm going to have to get pliers, I suspect. Okay, but so there's my first buttonhole stitch, but it doesn't quite look like a buttonhole because I didn't come all the way back down to the line. But now I'm going to go over and then below the line where I came up on the other side of here. I think that that is too far above. I think that's part of the problem. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna wreck my quilt before I ever get to stitch it. But that is just too far above the line. I think that's a little bit part of the problem I was having earlier. So I'm just gonna do like one or two stitches because otherwise you are going to go mad watching this. Okay, so I'm gonna go much, much lower down. So again, I'm coming up. Hmm. Oh, this is going to be, you know, not perfect. And that's okay because it's the first time I have ever done crazy quilting. And so I'm just learning. I'm learning, but you definitely need a really sharp needle. So I've, then I have to come back up, not all the way at the line where I started. Okay, so I've got one buttonhole this way and one buttonhole this way. Now it takes a couple stitches to start being able to see the pattern. So maybe part of the answer is I don't go all the way through. I think that that's definitely part of the answer. <laughs> I don't go all the way through. All right, so definitely, um, Yeah, 
yeah, definitely I've got I've got issues here because the the because I didn't really do this as rigorously and as well as I could have, and that's fine. I know how to do it better next time. And so there's going to be spots where I'm going to have to come back and give some attention and do some more um, embroidery to, you know, just basically cover up, <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like this that I didn't do well. And that's okay. This is about figuring it out, right? This challenge... Everything I've done in this challenge, I have done something I've never done before. And that actually makes me pretty freaking pleased with myself that I have just uh, said, hey, I am going to try the new things. And I'm going to try things I've never done before. Okay, so look, we're starting. It's starting to happen. It's, it's a hot mess right here. Okay, that's fine. Be a hot mess, but look here. That is a Cretan stitch, right? So we're getting there. We're getting there. And I really need a much sharper needle. This is insufficient. So I'm gonna have to get a sharper needle and I'm just gonna go on with this Cretan stitch and uh, that is sufficient amount of time. So I hope that you are having a good time with the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and uh, hope that you're doing something fun and pushing yourself to learn new things and really just feeding your creative soul. All right, take care.